Hello, and welcome back to Ask a News Worker. A while back, I did a book review of sorts on this channel of Seymour Hersh's autobiography entitled Reporter. Seymour Hersh is an American investigative journalist who's been around for many decades. A lot of his reporting has been very impactful, very serious, won awards, including the Pulitzer Prize. He reported on the My Lai Massacre in Vietnam. He reported on Watergate. He reported on Abu Ghraib. He's reported on many other things besides that and is considered to be one of the most esteemed and celebrated and respected investigative journalists in American history because of what he's accomplished. Recently, he entered the news yet again because he wrote a pretty explosive piece, forgive the pun, about the Nord Stream pipeline, which was blown up and destroyed, at least in part, in September of 2022. He has a Substack, which is a blogging platform, I guess, similar to WordPress in many ways. He has a Substack where he published an article based on an anonymous source of his claiming that the pipeline was destroyed in an operation planned and executed by the U.S. government, the CIA, and I believe other partners in NATO. That is the claim he is making in the piece that he has published on his Substack. Hasn't got a ton of circulation, especially in the United States, but it is out there. He is a reputable reporter who is making this claim. The U.S. government has denied it, said it's completely untrue, completely false. So this brings us to an important question, a question that I face all the time as a news worker and that you yourselves face as news consumers. Who is telling the truth? Who is right in this case? And how do we find out? Well, unfortunately, what I've realized, and I'm just being honest, is that it's very hard to answer that question accurately. Who is telling the truth? Seymour Hirsch has published this piece based on an anonymous source with intimate knowledge of the operation. Who is this person? We don't know at the moment because they're anonymous. Why are they anonymous? They're probably afraid of retribution. They're probably afraid of being punished maybe even killed, I don't know. They're being quiet for the time being. There's a long history of anonymous sources being used in journalism, even impactful journalism. I believe Watergate involved Deep Throat. I believe Deep Throat was the anonymous source involved in Watergate. I could be wrong on that. I will double check that. And that turned out to be a real person with actual intimate knowledge of government affairs in that case. So just because it's an anonymous source doesn't mean it's necessarily false. It just means you can't go after anyone to ask them the question, hey, how do you know all this stuff? I did another video recently on who is the source, what is the source. When the source is anonymous, you can't check up with the source. You just have to trust that it's real, trust the reporter. Seymour Hirsch has a reputation for doing good quality reporting. He's, again, won a Pulitzer. He's been celebrated many times over, so he perceivably would not go to press, would not publish something of this magnitude, of this import, without having some substantial backing behind it. But people still deny the claim, still say he's wrong or that his source is incorrect. They're denying all of it. And again, I don't know who is true. I can't tell you who is telling the truth, who is right, who is wrong in this case. I'm just highlighting a dilemma that we all face when looking at the news as an editor like myself or even as a consumer, we all have to make that decision every day. Who do we trust and why? Are we more inclined to trust Seymour Hirsch, the longtime investigative reporter, or are we more inclined to trust the U.S. government in this case? And why would we trust one over the other? That's an individual determination for all of us to make, and it's not always clear what goes into that. I try to think about it, I try to think about where my inclinations lie and why my inclinations are what they are. And I encourage you to do the same thing. That's really the whole point of this video. It's not to validate Hirsch's claim or to validate the U.S. government's denial. It's more so just to bring up that this is yet another example where an explosive claim is being made in public 
One side is claiming it's true and the other side is claiming it's not. How do we tell if it's true or not? It's very hard. We'll try to explore it in further videos. We'll try to get to the root of it, but I just wanted to use this as an example to highlight the sheer difficulty of knowing what is actually true and how a lot of our belief in what is true is just based on our confidence in certain people. In fact, that's where con man comes from. Confidence man. He seemed trustworthy. He seemed to know what he was doing. I'm not saying Hirsch is a con man. I'm not saying the U.S. government or the current president is a con man. I'm just saying that a lot of our belief in something is based upon our confidence. Seymour Hirsch has the confidence of a lot of people because he's a reputable, established, longtime reporter. But the U.S. government's also its own thing that people really believe in and feel cannot be wrong. I'm not making any judgments. <laughs> I'm just pointing out a dilemma. A dilemma for you to think about. Because once again, this channel is all about provoking thought. So tell me what you think. Have there been moments in your life when you've been reading the news where you, you weren't really sure who to believe? How did you deal with that? How did you psychologically resolve that? Or maybe you didn't. Maybe you just moved on with your day. I'd be curious to know either way. And keep watching. Ask a news worker. Plenty more videos to come. Thanks again.